Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Angular Air. I'm your host, Justin Schwarzenberger, and today we are going to be checking out NG Packager so we can get an idea of how we could take our Angular code and make it into a redistributable library that other people can use in their applications. Should be pretty cool. We're also going to learn a little bit about the uh, Angular package format, something that the Angular team put out, uh, so we get some more knowledge about that as well as I think we'll learn a little bit about some JavaScript module concepts and things like that. So a little added bonus that should be pretty cool. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, why don't we meet our panelists that we got with us today? Joining us, we have Alyssa Nichol. Alyssa, how's it going? Hey, guys. And we have uh, Austin McDaniel with us. Austin, what's going on? How's it going, everyone? I decided to pull the panda head back out again. Nice, nice. Have we ever talked about, do you have to like dry clean that thing or what? Uh, I never have, which makes me wonder if I need to. <laughs> I don't know, all right. Cool, all right. Uh, we also got Mike Brocky with us. Mike, what's going on? Uh, not too much, my man. Just hanging out, ready to have a little fun chatting about packaging. Nice, nice. All right, and our guest today, we have David Hergis with us. David, how's it going? Hi, everybody. David, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you got going on, and then we'll kind of dive into the topic. Yeah, uh, my name is David Hergis, and I'm a web application developer. I'm currently working for a company called uh, Aqua Healthcare, and we are developing mobile and desktop applications for hospitals, doctors, nurses. And we are present in one out of two hospitals worldwide. And as such, we try to make Angular present in one out of two hospitals worldwide. Very cool, very cool. So, so um, maybe before we start talking about NG Packager, maybe we need to talk about uh, what this concept is or why we would want to reuse, share our code, right? What, what are the kind of things, maybe some uh, references of, of what's out there right now that we can kind of relate to? Yeah. Um, yeah, ng packager. I mean, it's a tool for uh, compiling and packaging your library and Angular package format. And yeah, Angular package format is the recommended way for distributing your libraries to npm, and it's also the format in uh, the Angular core libraries. Come whenever you npm install Angular core or Angular common or Material, they all uh, are shipped in this package format. Wait and a second. So, Doesn't the Angular CLI build my project for me? What does this do? Yeah, well, the CLI, uh, it's built for applications. And I mean, it's uh, super cool for building applications. And um, but just for libraries, uh, <laughs> And yeah, so when you talk about libraries, you talk about like, I want to build like a cool button that like spins around and has a unicorn head. And yeah. I want to be able to give that to Alyssa to be able to download. I've got to be able to package this up. And uh, Alyssa, I did not write it in like coffee something. script. Oh, yeah, see, I don't know about that. <laughs> it does sound like something I would need right away, though. So. <laughs> So we need to be able to like get this in something that NPM and Angular and Node modules all know how to like magically work with, right? Yeah, right. It's um, when you want to NPM publish, uh, then you need this package format for pushing it out to NPM. So inside your project and in the CLI, you can work without package format, but yeah, for giving it out to other people, maybe to other teams in your organization, or maybe you've got some cool stuff that you want to extract and give back to the community on open source, then package format is what you go for whenever you want to NPM publish. I, I, um, 
interesting point there, right? As we talk, our initial thought is maybe about, okay, what are we going to make that can be reused by the community or by other companies or whatnot? Uh, but there's also the idea of something that's reused within your own company, right? Creating these packages that other teams throughout your company can use this, this shared code in their own Angular applications that they're solving and doing, right? Yeah, right. And uh, it's, for example, what we do at our company. Uh, we have teams at different sites. And so, yeah, we publish over an internal registry. And uh, so what is the Angular package format? What is that? Like, what do I have to, like, what do I have to do to be Angular package format compliant? Yeah. Um, Basically, it's a set of bundles. So first of all, it's uh, the JavaScript bundles that, that the application that uh, consumes your library will import. And then also, you have, uh, because of Angular's compiler, uh, you have the metadata for AOT that's published. And also, for TypeScript support, you have the type definitions. and all these assets together, yeah, the metadata, the type definitions, and the bundle, and the bundles come in three different formats. So not not that easy. <laughs> uh, all these together, it's Angular package format. Why does it come in three different formats? Do you know? Uh, yeah, there's one is uh, the UMD, Universal Module Definition, and that's basically whenever you uh, put it in a script tag in your HTML. For example, on Plunker, um, when you pull in Angular over a CDN, you put that script tag in your head, in the head section of your HTML, and that's uh, the, the UMD bundle that you that you are using. And Beside that, there are two bundles in uh, ECMAScript module format. One is uh, in ES 2015 syntax, and so with classes and all these new features, and also in module format. So that means import, export statements in your library. And then kind of crazy, you do the same thing, but uh, so module format, but in ECMAScript 5. Syntax, so you you don't have classes, but you have uh, down leveled prototypes of classes, and it's ECMAScript five syntax, but uh, still with import and exports in the JavaScript. Yeah, so you you mentioned this a little bit ago that uh, that's how Angular the Angular team packages their uh, scope packages that they have right now. Like we have Angular Core, Common. That you know, forms that sort of thing, right? That they follow this format to make it uh, ready for consumption in any of these different ways. Yeah, exactly. And for example, if you don't have a build tool that understands ES 2015, then you need ES5, uh, like the CLI does currently, I think. But then you still want to be able to use ECMAScript modules for the tree shaking. So that means. Uh, for reducing your final bundle size and cutting off those parts that you don't need, uh, you still need ECMAScript modules. And so, for accomplishing, um, yeah, for so, or for supporting all these different tools, that's why we have Angular package format. They yeah. just have to make it hard. They they just can't settle on one, right? <laughs> I blame Mike for that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, but the the good thing is, like you mentioned earlier, Austin, that like this is complicated, right? There's a lot of stuff to figure out, and it's pretty <laughs> cool that the Angular package format they, they figured this stuff out, right? The, the Angular team has figured this out, and they put it into practice in their different scope packages. So now we can feel good about it. And now all we have to do, or David had to do, <laughs> was then go and, and implement that, right? And and make that even easier for us as end users to to implement that, right? Yeah, I think the the level of effort here to like pull this off is greatly underestimated, right? <laughs> like as a user, there's like NPMI, do 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 do, there it is, and like 
so much actually went into that, like your TypeScript, all those different formats and types of the modules, the AOT metadata, uh, like all that. There's so much that is like really undervalued. And I know this firsthand because I like tried to do this myself and did very not well. <laughs> so I, I've actually used this project a couple of times and like rave reviews about it. What did you like? What did both of you come across that you were like, I need to do this? Like, can you give me a context for like? Because Austin, you're just saying that like you yourself tried it. What made you like? What were you working on? <laughs> what were you doing? It's like 20 commands that you have to run to build all these different things and puzzle them together if you do it manually. Hmm. This project does it in like one command package. <laughs> OK. I want to see this list of commands, like make a cool like logo for like what this does. You know, it's like all of this into one. It sounds, it sounds nice. <laughs> So then with ng packager, do we not have to really know about the Angular package format or concern ourselves with it? ng packager is going to take care of all that stuff for us. Is that correct? Yeah, it's going to take care of uh, the transformation. So compile your source code and then package it up in that format. But yeah, it also helps to understand a little bit of what is going on behind the scenes. <laughs> and. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely agree. It's become super complicated these days. So, so it behooves us to know a little bit about the Angular package format of what's going on, but we don't have to understand how to implement it ourselves, right? Yeah, you, you don't have to. And um, uh, maybe I can show just uh, how it works, like the a little getting started so we can look and and code how to use it and uh, look a little bit deeper into it so uh, i would go to share my screen Okay, I got to Sharon, but don't yeah. see anything yet. Okay. Um, what you see here is uh, in the node modules, Angular Common. We talked about that. Yeah, that's Angular package format. D All David, these I don't different think we, bundles. We're what? not seeing your screen right now. Oh, okay. Let's see. We see you. <laughs> so while you're getting that set up, uh, so Austin, uh, you have several libraries that you've re that you created and distributed. Um, are any of them using Packager yet? Ng Packager? Uh, yeah, I've got um, like the first time I used it, actually, I, I I I could not believe that it was actually that easy. Like I thought something had gone wrong. <laughs> like there's no way this is all like, all the stuff that I need for it to actually work and like. Turns out, like it worked exactly. Like all the paths were corrected, uh, like the styles embedded, all that stuff. And so, yeah, I, I've got it on a couple projects. Some of my um, NGRX uh, packages that I uh, have recently put out are are using it. We can see your screen now. Awesome. Ah, uh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> cool. And can you uh, bump the font up or zoom in a little bit too, please, for our viewers? Yeah, I try to increase font size a little. Cool. 
Great, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, that's how it goes. And basic example, uh, if you write your library, uh, here's your sources. And you will probably start with a index TS or public API. Uh, so that's like the main entry in your application just here for a library. So from this public API, you will export every everything that is in your library, like all the components and directives, services, and so on, or even just TypeScript classes, everything uh, included in your library. And then uh, the idea was that behind ng packager, if we can pick up this entry file, because everything else is referenced from here, uh, we can start off the compilation from this main TS and then compile it and find all, all the other source files and bundle them together. So what you normally do is and you put uh, either an ng package JSON, or you can also put it in your package JSON, where you tell ng package where it has to look for that entry file. So, and then when we run uh, ng package and let's see if it works. So uh, just Sorry. for the viewers, right? Like in this source project is just a bunch of different like things that are uh, like a module and like components. And you want to give this to someone else. And so basically what you've done here is you've installed ng packager and then set up that ng package JSON to tell it where like the main entry point for the component is. And now you're running the build command. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I hope this is large enough for you to see. Normally, you, you will work with uh, ng dash p and then give it the path to that ng package JSON. And it will go there, look for the entry file, and then start building. So, and I've got debug mode enabled here. Uh, you can see it, it will render the style sheets. It will uh, render your templates, inline everything. And then what you get out of it is uh, in the dist folder over here, what we talked about in the beginning, there's a folder called bundles. Uh, there you find these UMD JavaScript uh, files. The, one, uh, one regular UMD format and then a minified version of it. And here are these ECMAScript modules. Uh, yeah, let's have a look into that. So the guys and girls who are watching uh, can see what we've been talking about. Here you see, uh, that's your component. It's ECMAScript 5, but still you have those imports in the top of the library. So that's everything that your library needs to work. And at the end of the file, you have the export where all the components and directives, all the stuff in your library gets exported to, to the people using your library. And this is this isn't going to ship Angular, right? Like it's not going to like accidentally put Angular in here, right? It's only my dependencies. Right. Yes, that's why you have uh, the imports at the top, so you can see we import HTTP and HTTP client from Angular. So these are not included in your bundles. Uh, in in that bundle, it's only the stuff from your library. 
And so, so then there's a dependency on those, right? Um, how does that get defined in your package? Are you going to cover that in terms of um, in my package, you know, depends upon Angular Common or whatnot? Um, well, Justin, if you're installing an Angular package, you yeah. should just have Angular already installed, right? <laughs> Sure, but what if your package depends on forms, right? The forms module, like how do you do that? Yeah, uh, normally you will list it here in peer dependencies in your package JSON. So that uh, will be telling that you need Angular common or Angular forms uh, to work, but it will not for the library. So it's the, the application developer uh, still has to install the package then. So that kind of tells I need it to work, um, but don't install it. Let it put that task or put that burden on the developer. So should we be listing every Angular scope package that our code uses? Uh, or should we roll like Austin and say, well, you should have the Angular stuff, <laughs> all the main stuff? Yeah, so uh, Angular stuff, it could be added to peer dependencies. Cool. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've ever noticed, like when you npm install something and like you get like these like oodles of warnings, right? Like it's like peer dependency not found, blah, blah, blah. And that's what these are coming from. And, and like I think it's pretty best practice, right? Like on your GitHub repo, if you're distributing this, to like mention the dependencies. So um, one thing that I know uh, that it does also that you didn't note here is uh, if you take a look at that package JSON. So it actually moved my pa your package JSON from your source folder into your disk folder. Can you explain like why it's moving those things around? Uh, yeah. So what you will publish to uh, to the NPM registry is the dist folder. So um, what you would normally do is uh, go to that folder and, and publish that. So and uh, so yeah, copies to dist. Publish it from the root there. Why not uh, publish from the root? Because also in the package that you publish, those bundle files uh, need to be referenced in the package. So what you can see here. And so that tells that the main entry point is uh, in this bundle file. And for for, uh, for the Angular CLI, for a tool that uses a module format, uh, you have this field module listed here. And the same goes for the ES2015. And also the typings, uh, they are also listed in the package JSON, and that's also uh, generated by ng Packager automatically. So uh, that's the reason why it copies the package JSON and then adds the file paths in here. Yeah, it, I was, I was when I was using this, I was like, what is it doing with my package here? And then I like saw that it added all this metadata. And like that's the thing that I actually package. And I've had issues before where paths wouldn't resolve right. Right? I would have like a disk folder and be like, I can't find this and, and things like that. And the types would be all wonky. So I mean it handles like all of that stuff for you too. You know, I, I, I do have a suggestion here. You uh, in the descriptions of the packages that you manipulate, you should insert a panda emoji at the very <laughs> beginning. There is absolutely no bias to this suggestion at all. <laughs> no one would notice until they look <laughs> So just a real quick recap. So if I'm getting started using ng Packager, I want to use it for my library that I want to redistribute, right? I, I need to install ng Packager uh, into my project where my code's at. I need to create a ng-packager JSON file and an entry file, whether that be index.ts or public API TS, where I'd export my public interfaces and things like that. Um, and then I also need to create a package JSON as well. Is that correct? 
Uh, yeah, exactly. And so you could go either with a package JSON and uh, the ng package JSON next to it, or you could also um, add this in the package JSON. So that's a custom property called ng package. It's the same whether you put uh, put it in the custom property or in a separate file. One of these two methods will work. Is it is there a recommended way, one or the other, or is it just kind of convenience, whatever you'd like to do if you want to separate them out or whatnot? Yeah, it's more kind of convenience. I personally, I would go with uh, this way: put it in the package JSON and. Um, NG Packager also uh, ships a schema JSON. So when you add uh, the reference to the JSON schema here, you get um, auto completion in your IDE for the options that it takes. For example, here you can see entry file. And so it helps you with the stuff. What are some of these other options that we have down here? I, I don't think I'm familiar. Can you tell us? Um, yeah, the, there are two uh, which are important for dependencies also. And we talked usually every dependency is kind of external, so will not be included in your bundle. Uh, sometimes you may have a case where you want to embed the dependency in your package. Uh, that can be done with the embedded. Uh, I would not say it's recommended to do it, but maybe sometimes you have to. So you would um, like uh, put the name of the third party that you want to embed just here. So that's the uh, the import statement that you write in. And TypeScript. If you would put uh, Angular Core here, it would embed Angular Core. So don't do this. But uh, maybe sometimes you have a third party that you want to embed in the bundle that can be done in embedded. And the second one for external dependencies or for yeah for dependencies is um, UMD module IDs, and that's. Uh, also something that causes a lot of confusion, I guess. When uh, when bundling this UMD, uh, I, I do it to rollup and ng packager. And most of the time, rollup will try to guess that UMD module ID, but sometimes it can't. And then you need to help it out here. So that usually looks like, um, for example, I show what it looks like for Angular Core. You would put the TypeScript module here, and then the UMD module ID would be the value. Does does it make sense to you? <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of those like okay, JavaScript modules or the whole module scenarios kind of comes into play there, right? Of having a, a somewhat of an understanding of what that's going on, of what this part is solving, right? Uh, but if you have that, I think that that's pretty clear. Yeah. So, and most of the time, at ng packager or rollup actually tries to uh, guess this ID automatically, and ng packager also uh, tries to provide best practice or like well-known best practice values where it can, but sometimes it just can't, and then uh, you edit here by hand. Hey, maybe while we're on the topic of modules, could you kind of talk about what this FESM thing is, right? Maybe a lot of our viewers have heard about FESM and what that is coming out of the Angular space um, and what that's referring to. Um, yeah, it's basically like concatenating your JavaScript into one file. And um, I mean, if, if that's your source code and you compile every uh, you compile all the source files, you will get one JavaScript file for each TypeScript file, right? And then uh, flattening means take all the JavaScript and um, concatenate and put it into one 
large bundle file. So uh, yeah, it looks like this. <laughs> you see, there's your service, then your module, it's all in one bundle. And the reason why you do it is uh, that you get everything in this flattened bundle here and at the bottom of the module. So you see here in this flattened file, there are all the symbols your library uh, exports to your to your consumers, and then um, when you use it in an application, the the tree shaking can go kind of look. This is being used, and this is being used, and uh, maybe this also. But this not, and that's not used either. And so it can kind of cut off these stuff then from your final application bundle. Which is good, very good, right? <laughs> we want that. Every time I think of tree shaking, I think of like a bear shaking a tree to get honey pots down. Is, <laughs> does everyone else think about this? Yeah, oh. I think you have an issue with bears, my man. Well, I don't think pandas go after honey. <laughs> so this, does this also then provide that opportunity for import statements for everybody who consumes your library to have just the one level, you know, like at Angular slash core, right? And they can get all this stuff from there. Does that enable that as well with the Phasm stuff, or is that coming from something else? Uh, yeah, that's also coming from the Phasm stuff. So uh, yeah, th there are no uh, like deep imports yeah, where you it's all Angular core. It's not uh, that you have but to write the libraries. There are libraries JS where like I want to import like behavior subject. The nice type RxJS slash behavior subject. How does this play into that? Oh, I don't know how uh, RxJS is packaged, to be honest. Uh... Yeah, like they do deep deep imports uh, for like better tree shaking. Um, uh, so like you're not just importing like the whole Rx package, right? It can't it can't do like tree shaking very well. And so like you import individual things. How does this like play into like if I wanted to maybe I had a really big package and in your library you only needed like a couple of things from it like you know do, does your library like support the ability like to do deep imports where my app can actually shake out the things that I'm not using um I mean in, in Andrew Packer and uh it's it's not uh, splitting up to individual files. It will write out the flattened uh, bundle. Can I pass the question to Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Make him answer it. Yes. We need to have like lifelines where we can call Ben Les or something. Nice. Do that. I'm not, <laughs> Wait, I'm, that I'm, mean, I'm not sure. Does that mean Mike's not going to answer it? I feel so heartbroken. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like I'm not talking all all crazy here. Like a bear just shaking a tree. Yeah. Isn't it like path mapping or something that you're saying the like, okay, this it like uh maybe with the um Angular uh common HTTP, right? For the new HTTP client, saying like it's Angular at Angular slash common, but you could also get to a at Angular slash common slash HTTP to get to the HTTP client module. Like how do you set up that sort of scenario? Yeah, yeah, with the deep imports, where I don't have to bring in the entire thing. I can just bring in like the pieces that I want. Yeah, I'm not a. F I'm really not a fan of that, because I, I, 
then the inner folder structure of your package then makes a difference because what it's doing is goes to the package and then to a subdirectory to find a specific import. So why did they do it like that then? I, I don't know. There's other libraries that do it as well, but if you import directly from the package, that makes sense to me because that's basically the public API that's being exposed. Once you start reaching into the innards, because you can go ahead and import just about anything, but if something gets bundled internally different or anything else, then your application is going to break because you're not following the essentially the published public API. Definitely sounds like something that we could have another episode on. <laughs> so maybe we'll, maybe we'll plan that. But, uh, yeah, but uh, it's, it's a good point by Mike. Yeah, if uh, maybe you have things that are used internally in your library and you don't want to expose, and then if you go just by deep imports to single files, you can import internal stuff. And so that uh, kind of gives you the opportunity to to tailor the public AP surface. So sounds like it's pretty easy, right? Like if I'm writing an application or I'm writing like something that I want to give to someone else, just install this project, drop in a couple config files and run the build and you're good to go and you can publish straight from there. Like, Nothing other. If you didn't get anything else out of this episode, that's it. One command to do like 12 different steps, and it's magical. <laughs> but now, what um, What do you have this code in? What project? Is it just your own like hand-rolled build system here? Is it the Angular CLI? And, and is there something that we need to know if we have our code that's saying an Angular CLI app for our Angular module that we want to redistribute? Like, is there something we have to write different, like our uh, our template sent our template imports and, and things like that for components or anything like that that we need to worry about? Oh no, you just write uh, like you, you like the normal way. You write your application. You can write uh, your components, and uh, let's see if I can find a better example than that. So that should look pretty familiar to everybody. You write your component as a decorator. Uh, you can use template URL, and also you can use different style languages. That's uh, an ng packager, uh, also trying to support SCSS and less and stylus. So the same as in the CLI, it has support for for these. Uh, three different style preprocessors. So you just reference your style sheet there, and it will go render this and then inline the style sheet to your bundle. So, what about in cases where we have something in our project that's specific to our build process? I mean, like the SAS and, and less stuff is kind of similar to that concept, right? What if we have something different, like how would we? How is ng packager going to tap into that, or is there a way for us to to work with that? We have special instructions that need to happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, there's one option you can give in the package JSON for uh, where it's going to look for the for these include passes. I think it's called file include passes. So. Um, this would be like, I don't know, shared styles, something like, like that. And um, so that, that's that's pretty much it here in the ng pack, uh, in the package JSON or the ng package. Uh, it's very minimalistic. I've been working on a programmatic API in ng packager and that maybe could give you some more control over it in the future. So Mike, why doesn't the CLI do this for me already? We're just waiting on your PR, buddy. <laughs> 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 
So when when's that happening? <laughs> Nobody? Nobody's taking that? <laughs> In the future. <laughs> uh, it's definitely being looked into um, because obviously people want to publish packages. That's why great public um, and community uh, solutions come out just like ng packager here and determining the best way to expose that and make it available did you just read that off of a card <laughs> okay did no, kind of I, I looked did at my sound... camera i wanted it to be honest and true because it is <laughs> this is coming in v6 right like everyone knows that there's a pr <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everyone obviously. who reads the GitHub's like at night when they're bored. <laughs> Alyssa, don't knock it. I'm oh, sorry. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> so wait, I have another question here that just kind of popped in my mind. So if we've got, um, hold on a second. Uh, so if, if, if we've got our code and we're doing ng package packager to package it, so it's building our code, uh, is that correct? Yep. Okay. So is it doing AOT build? How do we target like for production? Like, is it, what do we need to worry about with those, those sort of things? Or does it just handle that for us and does what we should be doing? Uh, it does what you should be doing. So it will compile with, uh, ng, with the Angular compiler with NGC and it will write out the metadata for AOT. That's this, in case you ever wondered that metadata JSON file, which kind of contains a lot of stuff. And that's what you should be doing, and it will be handled for you. So you get this for free. Okay, so when Austin earlier said, you just have to do a couple little things, and then boom, you got it, right? It, like, it literally is that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and as Austin said, there's like uh, a lot of different tools, and you have to configure every tool and and then also configure them the right way that they play together with each other. And so that's all handled for you. And ng package also sets up that all these tools like a build pipeline for you and makes sure that they produce the right output and work well with each other. And then, so that's a, a binary, right? I'm assuming that then we can plug this into our continuous integration pipeline and all that stuff pretty cleanly. Yeah, you could, for example, put it in um, in a script of your package JSON, then invoke it on your CI. So let me show how that could look. For example, here, if, if that's your package JSON, you in the script section, you can put command here, and then you would uh, run it on your CI with, if you're using npm, npm run build. Or if you're on yarn, just yarn build, and that's going to run the ng packager. Cool. And then I think, uh, as you were talking about earlier, uh, that it takes that package JSON file and moves it in there and adds some additional stuff. Is that prepping it then all for like delivery to NPM? And, and how does that come into play now or, uh, for us to publish these packages? Um, yeah, if you want to publish, then you can try to demo. Yeah, let's publish foobar package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So you, you see here that's a that's a library. There's a dist folder, and so <laughs> let's check first. Okay, I set the private flag here, so nothing is going to happen. Either way, what you could, would do uh, npm publish dot uh, so current directory, or you could e also do npm pack in this directory, and that will give you the tarball here, this zipped, uh, yeah, a, a zip file with a, 
with the content that you could publish. So you would do NPM publish sample material uh, like this. So really, from from this point, it's just our regular NPM publish stuff. It's nothing with Packager. But Packager, ng Packager is what is done is it's done all that plumbing that, that we don't have to worry about for setting up that package JSON file with everything it needs. And now we can just go do our publish the way we normally would do. Is that correct? Yep. Cool. Is there a way to work in uh, versioning for your libraries that you create in here? Like, how would that go about? I wonder if anybody has any information on that. Wouldn't that just be the package JSON version? Yeah, exactly. Just the package JSON version. And uh, that's, you can do this with, uh, you, you can do it manually, or you can uh, run an automated tool for this. I think a uh, standard, standard version is pretty popular out there. So you could uh, automate this as well with any other tool. There's nothing in ng package. Uh, and it's also the idea was also to not make it like the super tool that makes that takes care of everything, but uh, keep it focused on on uh, packaging the the right format for publishing and uh, all the other things like like a versioning workflow around you can do with any other tool. It. Is this something specific for Angular modules and stuff that we want to redistribute? Or could we use this for just like TypeScript modules that we want to do or TypeScript code that we want to redistribute? Uh, yeah, sure. It will also work for TypeScript code only. So um, that's like a special case for ng Packager. It will work with TypeScript only, yeah. Yeah, because it seems like there's a lot of stuff that it's doing, right? That the, even the Angular package format is doing and, and setting up that could be used in these other scenarios too. That's cool. Yeah. So what you will get, of course, is uh, I mean, it's a specific format to Angular. So you you will get, for example, this metadata, which doesn't make sense in other frameworks like React, Vue, whatever. They will have no usage for the metadata JSON, but it will still work for them. So they will still get the ECMAScript modules, and they will still get the UMD bundles and the type definitions. And so that's going to work for plain TypeScript uh, as well. So there's certainly a lot of compelling reasons why to use it. Right? Uh, is there anything why maybe we wouldn't, or another a packaging solution that may be worth looking into as well, anything like that? Or making um, our own? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the idea I had like was also take away configuration and keep the configuration as minimal as possible. Sometimes that doesn't work for you. Sometimes maybe you need more complex, uh, you have more complex scenarios and you need more control. And then maybe ng packager isn't the best for you, and it's better for you to uh, to write your own packaging. And there's one cool talk I'd like to point out. Uh, it's from Yuri Strumpflohner, and it's called "Create and Publish Angular Lips Like a Pro." And he goes uh, through this process and shows how you can set it up like manually, step by step. And uh, yeah, uh, I definitely recommend looking at his talk if you want to go deep dive into building Angular package format. Nice, and that was, uh, was that NGBE where he had that talk? Uh, it was called Create and Publish. Let's see if we can find it. Create and Publish. Yeah, that it is. So if you Google for for that talk, 
he pretty much goes over every step in the and every tool that you need to set up. Very cool, very cool. All right, well, we're getting close to the top of the hour, the end of our show, our episode. Uh, any other things that you want to add uh, for us, David, uh, before we kind of wrap up on the whole NG Packager stuff? Um, yeah, maybe one thing. Also, if you're looking for for a good starter, there's an, there's an example from Jason Aiden. And just look for Angular CLI lib example on GitHub. If you just want to get going, that is also a very good step-by-step uh, -step instruction to follow. And yeah, as I said, uh, also check out, uh, especially Yuri's talk, if you want to go deep dive and know the internals, how everything works under the hood. Cool. I actually have one other question for you. Um, as the Angular package format moves forward with new versions, I think we're getting a new version when v6 drops. Um, how are, are you keeping up to date with that? Was, is ng Packager then updating as well to stay on the current version of that? And is that a big challenge to do? Or, or maybe we could talk a little bit on that. Yeah, I, I hope to. <laughs> and so as we said, uh, the future is version 6. and. Fingers crossed that we make it, uh, get ng Packager into version 6 of uh, Angular and the CLI. And so I hope to keep up. <laughs> I mean, and so the, it will be super cool to have it a part of the built-in solution. Now, if it does land in the CLI, are you going to still continue the maintenance as a separate package? Did you hear me or no? Or do I need to repeat? No, no, so, so can you repeat? Yeah. So if you are able to land support in the CLI for version six, are you going to maintain ng packager as a separate library as well? I'm sorry. So, uh, the, the connection was cut off. I think he's typing in the chat. So maybe you can check David in the chat and see if uh, that comes through for his question. I like to ignore him too, David, so don't worry. I typed I it into the uh, chat. Frozen. Uh, you're able to see that. Is he frozen for you guys too? I, he's frozen. Yeah, too. he's frozen. All right, Austin, you answer that question then. Yeah, Austin, answer that question. Why would I know the answer? <laughs> um. Maybe you just put the okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yay, you're back. Yeah, we we heard you. Do you not hear us? Oh no. <laughs> Sorry, guys, for the bumpy ending to a fun show. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we'll get to let's get to picks, and we'll kind of wrap things up. So, who has picks? Anybody? Raise your hand. Okay, Austin. Austin, what's your picks? Yeah. So I want to steal some glory and uh, <laughs> steal Mike's glory and announce Angular CLI 1.7 came out. I don't actually know what was in it. Uh, <laughs> but you might, might know. <laughs> it's horrible. You can't steal someone's pick and then have no idea about it. Like, that's the, <laughs> the literal worst. <laughs> if you're so excited about it that you're picking it, tell me about it. What's in there, buddy? <laughs> what have I been up to? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Is this the um, NG upgrade? It's faster builds. That's all I know. Shh, shh. Is it the upgrade? Tell us. Update. Update. Brick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I have another pick. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
I know about this one. <laughs> it's called Webpack Stylish. Those of you who are still rocking the Webpack, you're not in the, you know, going all crazy in Angular CLI. Uh, there's, like, it's always mystified me, like, why Webpack is so freaking ugly. We're UI developers, right? Like, why does it have to be ugly? We should fix this. And someone, like, formatted all the consoles and everything like that where it looks nice and pretty. So cool Webpack plugin for people to check out. That's it. All right, uh, Mike, do you have anything that hasn't been taken yet? I do have one. It's a VS Code extension, and it is called Polar Code, uh, which is a play off of uh, Polaroid. It allows you to take screenshots of uh, code that you have uh, copied within your editor. So you copy it, you run the Pull Code extension, and it'll pop up on the right. I'll split your screen, and you paste your code into it, and it'll give you a file that you can save to be able to share code easily. So if you're building slides, presentation, want to share some code on Twitter or something like that, then it's a great uh, little extension to uh, do that. Very happy with it so far. Yeah, that's a cool pick. I, I've been wanting to, no, no pun intended, cool pick, right? Uh, but that's something I've been wanting to look into as well uh, for sharing that code. That's pretty cool. Um, Alyssa, do you have anything? Yes. So uh, for some weird reason, I've been nerding out lately about um, some computer science -y stuff, so a little bit off dev. But um, I found this cool article that I'll link um, of kind of talks about like big O notation and like it does it in JavaScript terms, which is like super helpful because I guess there's not like a lot of crossover between like the JavaScript world and like computer science. Most people are like, I don't know, I just hate JavaScript if they're on that side of the world. So yeah, I really love this article. It was super like, not like layman's, but like I understood it so anybody can understand it. <laughs> so yeah, um, and I think that's all I've been, oh, did you guys hear? Did you hear about AngularJS? And July will be the last, like one, I think 1.7 is like the last official release. Like they're gonna keep like pack, like patching like security stuff, but like it's the final countdown. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's a final count. So yeah, this is my two picks. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Sounds we good. should have a funeral for it. No. It's not dying. It's not dying. Your projects will be fine. They will live on into eternity. Um, but you know, if you have the option, upgrade or I guess what's the word? It starts with an M. Migrate. Migrate now. <laughs> Always trying to stir the pot, Austin, huh? <laughs> he always does. He is the show's antagonist. We should get him like a little oh my god panelist pins. So we should get panelist pins and it has like your archetype on it, right? And Austin's would be the antagonist. Yes. It's like yes. our spirit animals or something. Yes. I can do that. For the show though, yeah. Cool. All right, I have two picks. Since we've been talking a lot about Yuri Strumpfluner today uh, and his talk, you mentioned his talk, um, I just got word from him in our Slack channel that he's gonna give a second improved version of that talk at NG Vikings. So check out the, the link that from the previous talk and also check out the new talk when it comes out. That should be pretty cool. And then he also wrote an article about uh, creating a CD pipeline with Angular, GitLab, and Firebase. Uh, so that sounds pretty cool. Uh, check that out. That's my other uh, other pick. All right, David, uh, let's see if your audio is back and it's working. Do you have any picks for us uh, to wrap this up? Yeah, I've got two. Uh, I'm going to pick uh, Austin's blog post on version stamping your Angular app. And my second pick is uh, non technical or half technical. And it's a TED talk called uh, The Math Behind Basketball Wildest Moves. All Take right. a look at it. If, if, you, if you're not playing basketball, it's uh, super interesting. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right. Well, David, thank you very much for coming on the show, uh, sharing, talking about NG Packager, all, all the things that you do for NG Packager. Really appreciate that. And uh, it was great to get an idea of, of what we got out there uh, and the possibilities we have and, and all the great stuff it does for us that we don't have to do, which is awesome. So thank you for coming on and sharing the time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. And All right. Anytime. All right. That's a wrap.
we will catch everybody next week. See you later.